What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another update video for you guys and we've got some good news actually for once. Good news. Is it? Yeah, some good news. Come on then. And the first update is from the 17th of May, pubs, restaurants will be back open and stadiums for concerts and football and all sporting events will be open to up to 10,000 people. I mean, well, it's slightly good news, 10,000 people. It's yeah, better it than slowly it, does it. Better than what it was before, I tell you that. 1,000 or 2,000 for the North London derby. So we so gonna be, there are going to be fans uh, back for the one game at the end of the season. Exactly, for the one... <laughs> shame we didn't make the FA Cup final because it would have been back for that, but... Um, yeah, I'll be back for the Leicester game away, so probably no Spurs fans there. Yeah, so. I don't think it'll be any away, any away fans. But it bodes well for next season. Uh, apparently, yeah, so there's not going to be any fans for the EFL Cup final, it looks like, at the moment. But apparently the EFL just tweeted out saying that they're still looking um, for test events to see if they can have fans in the final. So don't rule it out, but as of now there are going to be no fans at the final. So the, I thought the Carabao Cup was supposed to be a test event for the Euros. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> that's not working out, is it? Yeah, I mean, look. They, well, they I mean, moved it so there could be fans in there, but yeah. it doesn't look like that's happening. <laughs> I told you there wouldn't be fans in there, and you were like, eh, there will be, there will be. Uh, but look, at least it's good news that fans are going to start filtering through by the end of the season, and hopefully by next season we'll be back in stadiums. Yeah, I mean, that, that looks like it's heading that way. Um, if surely with the vaccine out and everything, uh, you'd think by next season everything should be back to normal, but... I'm not so sure. We'll see. I don't yeah, know. We'll see. We'll see from now to the end of the season. I'd like to stay positive because you know it's been such a negative year, year and a half. So I mean, yeah. we just need to. We need some positive news, don't we? Yeah, and I guess it's, it's a step in the right direction, isn't it? All right. Well, let's move on to some proper football news. And this time, ESPN have been talking, and they've been talking about Matt Doherty. And they say Matt Doherty's Tottenham future is uncertain with manager Jose Mourinho having doubts over the defender's ability to be a success at the club. I mean, it's yeah, it's not hard to envisage that at the moment, the way um, he started his Spurs career. He's just seemed very average. He hasn't been the upgrade, upgrade we were looking for. He hasn't really shown anything to show me that he's a right back is going to take us forward. And um, it's just not been good enough. Sometimes it takes players kind of a while to bed in. Um, but can yeah. that case be, be the same if you're coming from another Premier League side and only played pretty like, much English football need, your whole career? I need to see something from him at least, a bit of quality. Like, I need to see him showing something when he's on the ball and a spell being, like, solid. I'm just not seeing I'm not seeing anything at the moment to tell me that he can be a right-back in a squad that's challenging me at the top end of the table um, at the moment. I'm, I'm willing to be proved wrong. I, I think he works well in a certain system when it's like he can not build around him, but he can fit in a system. He showed that at Wolves. Mm. He fit in very well in that system. But... Um, at the moment, when he doesn't really fit in on what we're trying to do, I don't think at the moment, yeah. and it, it's just it's just not working out. From what I mean, I'm, I'm willing to be proved wrong, but at the moment it's not working out. It's for Dr. also T. a bit telling with Aurier out injured. Um, he's not starting every game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. He did. He did. Um, he did. Um, Go to Doherty one when uh, he needed a goal for he because he I think he is a more offensive uh, than Tanganga, but um, he doesn't trust Doherty at the moment. Uh, so he, I, I don't think, think any of the fan base do either. No, I, we just don't. It's, it's just not what we've seen. So, um, Doherty needs to step it up, or I don't think he's going to be here beyond the summer. Mm. Let's move on. We've got some quotes from Glenn Hoddle on Jose Mourinho talking about when they were talking about Jose Mourinho to be sacked. And the quote mm. is, how can you sack someone who's got you to a cup final? It's ridiculous. He has earned the right with what he has done in his career to be, to be given more time. Yeah, I agree. He does deserve more time. I think um, he deserves to see out the season at least for sure and see where we end up and if we've won anything or where we end up in the league. Obviously, uh, right now, things are awful in terms of league performances, 12 games, three wins, and uh, it's a real bad slide, real bad slide. We're falling like a stone. But it would be silly to even contemplate sacking him right now. I think that would be stupid. But is him getting into a Carabao Cup final a reason not to sack someone? Forget Carabao, Europa League as well. And um, also, you can't... You, I, I know we're ninth, but we have to see where we end up at the end of the season. I think you've got to give him to, until the end of the season. You've got to let him see it out. Some people will argue that every other manager that has been sacked from Tottenham, well, in recent years, have been sacked for less. Well, not, not every other Tottenham manager hasn't had the CV of Mourinho. Mm. So I think 
whatever you think of him, whatever you think of us right now, I think you just got to see. I think we just got to assess at the end of the season where we're at. I think it would be stupid to sack him mid-season. And um, at the end of the season, if if you everything's gone wrong, yeah, then you can judge it. All right, let's move on to a bit of loan watch now. Oli Skip for Norwich, another 90 minutes completed for him, another brilliant performance completed by him in a 1-0 win over Rotherham. And a pirouette, and, I think, yeah. Huh? I saw a pirouette from him. I saw, saw the, just go onto Twitter and, and yeah. type in Oliver Skip <laughs> and Norwich. You will just see the plaudits coming in for him, the, the highlight reels. I mean, this guy has t- stepped up a big notch since joining Norwich. And the Norwich Twitter account tweeted straight after the game. They just tweeted... Oliver Skip is a very, very good footballer. Yeah. That's what they tweeted. They just, lo- yeah. <laughs> they just love Skip over there and it's so good every week and literally seeing um, the highlights roll every single week. It's a joy to watch and I'm, I'm so happy for him and I'm looking really, I can't wait uh, until next season. For One thing I've back. been really impressed with from these highlight reels is his distribution in long balls over the top and through balls and mm. stuff like that. He really looks a player, man. I'm so excited to have him back and it's a shame we don't have him now because we could have done with him right now. Yeah, for sure. We definitely could have done with him now. He's he definitely could have done a job when we're struggling to find a partner sometimes or Hoibi early in the season. Like, he definitely could have done a, done a job there. So, look, I think that this experience is doing him good. I think it need, needed to happen. He needed to get that proper game time, and he's getting that now. And um, he's going to be a real asset for us. Real, And especially because he's a homegrown guy, a Tottenham Academy product. Like, it just means he's going to have a strong affinity with the club. So, it just makes him better. That's what Jose says. Um, do you think that Harry Winks would... Um would kind of benefit from a year out on loan. No, not at this point. He's twenty four now. It now. It's, yeah, I think at this point, I don't think. I think at this point, when he's that age, that's kind of you're getting into the player you are. Really, you've done all the developing, and obviously, you can still. There are players of who don't peak until a bit later, but um, I don't think a year out on loan is what he needs. Winks. Mm. He just needs regular. Well, he does need regular game time, and he's not going to get that, I suppose. Yeah, so it's better, I think it's better to sell him in that case mm. rather than. How much sure we can get for him? Wait a sec. Did Sim just say we're good? He wants to sell Harry Winks. I didn't say that. It's better to sell him than to loan him. Yeah. So what would you prefer? What's your uh, thing with Harry Winks? I'd rather, I'd rather he gained confidence and uh, and and stayed, but uh, it doesn't look like at the moment Mourinho fancies him. But do you back him to to be that player to start week in week out. No, no, not so at the he, moment. So he needs to either leave on loan or leave fully no, leave, to leave get fully. game time. Yeah, no, there's no point loaning him. If you're going to let him leave, and let him then sell him. All right. Uh, Ryan Sessegnon, he made his comeback from injury on the weekend. He's uh, let a bit of a lengthy time on the sidelines for Hoffenheim. He came on on the 87th minute and um, involved in a brilliant cameo, apparently. 4-0 win over Werder Bremen. Yeah, and he, I know he came on for the last few minutes and he did a goal-saving challenge and then had a lung-busting run on the b- other end and helped set up a goal. So, good little cameo. Seems to be back in back back to form a bit after an injury and he was in great form before the injury as well so that obviously was a frustrating that he stopped him in his tracks a bit mm. but he seems to be gaining confidence uh, um, out in Germany and so it's good for him to return again um, back from injury and hopefully he gets a run in the team again In the summer let's say we bring him back uh, to fight Regulon for that left left back spot mm-hmm. uh, for argument's sake what do you do with Ben Davis? do you keep him in and around the squad or do you try and raise funds and get rid of him because he's quite versatile can fill in at yeah. centre back as well I mean if we can sell if we get a buyer I'll tell him if we get a buyer how much? 15 million 15? yeah how much if did we sign him for? Lucky, we signed him for like he was in the deal with Vorm and Sigurdsson right um, so well I'm not sure the actual figure but I believe actually we paid um, um, we bought um, we gave them Sigurds and plus money for Davis and Vorm, I believe. We gave them Sigurds and plus money. Wow. <laughs> so it wasn't the best deal on our And then they sold him for like 50 million. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't our best uh, finest hour. <laughs> I would say. All right. And uh, Juan Foyf, a lot of you have been calling for us to add him in the uh, loan update. So we've brought him in. He played 90 minutes at right back for uh, Villarreal against Atletico Bilbao in a 1-1 draw. But it's quite interesting to note that he's played a lot of positions for Villarreal this season. He's filled in at centre-back, right-back and centre-mid. A bit like for us. Yeah, he never really played centre-mid for us, though. No, but right-back he played a lot. Yeah, he played right back and, and centre back, but yeah. he never played centre mid. And no. a lot of fans at the time were saying, maybe this guy can play centre mid. And and he's um, Unai Emre has obviously uh, felt that. Yeah, um, I reckon. Um, I would. I wonder if there is a pathway back for him at Spurs because I, I always thought Foyth was decent, but I can't. Uh, are they going to maybe if if they um, 
if they enact the clause, don't they? They get they have an option to buy, so it's unlikely he's, he's going to come back. But you never know; he could be back with us next season, and he could be a decent option. Um, but I don't know. I haven't been watching a lot of Villarreal. Don't I? I know they've been going okay, and obviously you know yeah. use him a lot. Um, but I I never had a problem with Foyf personally. I quite liked him. I did quite like him. I thought he just needed to bulk up a bit to be a proper uh, defender in the Premier League. I thought he was a bit too scrawny for the Premier League. I think I prefer him to Sanchez. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you're probably right. Uh, what I loved most about Foyf is when he played like the big games, the derbies and stuff. He used to wear that war paint, yeah. war paint on his uh, face. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Um, and last but not least, let's talk about Troy Parrott. Troy he, boy. He played in a nil-nil draw against Oxford on the weekend for Ipswich Town. Um, and he played at Cam. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. Another new role for him. Because I know, I know Millwall had him out wide as well sometimes um, playing Ip- there. Ipswich have normally been playing up front, but in this game he played in the cam role. Uh, the striker Norwood did go off um, quite in like midway through the second half, so maybe he did move up to striker after that, but he started in the cam role. Oh, finished nil-nil, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it wasn't exactly a great uh, experiment, it seems, but... Whatever, I think the more game time, doesn't matter what position, I think. If he learns new positions, that's also great. Makes him more versatile, so I'm all for it. Mm. And obviously, Dane Scarlett banging in the goals for the under-18s and it's the under-23s again. He's just Did doing you see this bits. video that went, then was circulating about him? What, when he was in the youth youth? No, he's like sort of bullying some kid or something. No, I haven't seen, seen that. that no. I do, I'm not sure if it was him, but there was some video circling around. It looked like uh, when he was younger, it looked like maybe two or three years ago, he was like bullying some kid in crutch- on crutches or something. I haven't seen that. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't know if it was actually him or not. I mean, it looked like him, but I don't know the context or anything of the situation. It was just circling on social media, I saw. Oh, I didn't see that. Um, but yeah. yeah I don't know if anyone saw it but whatever <laughs> well let us know if you did see it let us know uh, more information about it in the comment section below but that is the end of our update and our loan watch let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding anything we spoke about like subscribe and comment and as always come, come on you Spurs, Spurs.